I don't know, it's so weird. Like, and that's why I be trying to tell people, like, they used to make fun of me when they be like, oh, you from Maryland? I'm like, no, I'm from Baltimore. It's, mm-hmm. it's different. They like, bro, it's in Maryland. I'm like, no, it's, it's different. It's because, like, how you from PG County? You only about, what, 45 minutes, 30 minutes? Fuck now, we like an hour away. Baltimore, oh. an hour north. Yeah, so, <laughs> he, y'all like an hour away. That ain't nothing, though. Mm-hmm. And we talk <laughs> totally different. Like, even with D.C., D.C., to me, they talk more like <clears throat> Philly because they be talking about June and June and all that stuff. Like, uh-huh. yeah, like, that's how Philly people talk. And so it's like, I don't know. Like, it's just so weird how it's all divided like that, but we all one small yeah. situation. But with clubs, like, I could listen to either one all day. Because to me, it's just, it's instruments and it's different. Like, club mm-hmm. music going to keep on switching. We're going to keep on, it's going to be a, it might sound the same beat if you keep on going, mm-hmm. you know, the same time. Or the whole time, it might sound the same beat. But it's like, that shit going to crank. Yeah, I don't, go-go. Go-go. I don't mind go-go. I don't mind go-go sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. go-go chuck, you know what I'm saying? Okay, like, come on. I don't mind them for real, but, like, I'm on the case with by, like, that's what, that was, that's where my roots at. So, my right of Yes, you are. Like, that's my song. Like, I, not for real. Like, that's what I grew up on, so that's what I'm going to They played all that shit on our radio, though. Like, 92.3, you're yeah. going to get all the Baltimore music. Not 92.3. 92.3. Not for real. <laughs> you're getting all the Baltimore music. But yeah, in certain yeah. areas, you're not about to get that station. Like, yeah, no. The crazy yeah. thing is, 92.3 right up the street from my mom's house. That's what she had me playing on the way to Baltimore. Yeah, but they that's when DMX died. So all you heard was what, what? I'm like, I don't want to hear this shit. Dude, <laughs> that was lit, though. Yeah, like, but, um. That was lit. Like, hey, I don't shit. know. That's why, that's why, like, low key, like, I be feeling some kind of way now because all these, like, artists, like, Lil Uzi Bird, all these people, and then you got, you got all these people that's from different cities trying to, like, prove where the sound coming from but not giving Baltimore don't get no credit on that line like it's always Philly, Jersey Chicago like mm-hmm. places that this ain't where the sound come from like give Case with her credit she created that sound mm-hmm. like for real like she and she God rest her soul but like she created that sound and it's to the point where Drake I don't know did you hear that situation with Drake when he came out with that bullshit in his album before the, he came out just, with this. The just, yeah, the one before that? Yeah, where well, it was he like, like on the club. Miami club. Yeah, but he had one of the girls from Baltimore's voice on mm. the song. He didn't pay her for it and give her no credit. And I don't know if he knew that was her now, but she came out about it for real. Mm-hmm. And my homeboy, Terry, T.S.U. Terry, he did, um, he, it's a, it's a movie on Netflix. Mm called um what's the name of that movie something beat i can't remember the name of the movie that's it because i was just watching the movie mm-hmm. but he they um all collabed with this girl from baltimore and they came out with this movie <clears throat> and it's showing the baltimore culture like from the poetry to the blues like people don't even know billy holiday like she's from baltimore like that's that was her stomping ground mm-hmm. and she's one of the most known blues singers in history and Edgar Allan Poe, one of the most known poets, resided in Baltimore. So it's like, it's so much history that's in Baltimore, but the city's so torn down because of the police. I'm be real. Like, the police up north is dirty. Like, they dirty cops. Most of the drugs and stuff you see in them streets really was there. When people be talking about it, they be like, yeah, the police put, nah. Dead Baltimore ass. City, <clears throat> Baltimore County. All of that stuff, the police legit put, you can see them putting that shit on the streets, putting them guns on the streets, and then they take them dudes and they lock their asses up afterwards. That shit happens everywhere, though. Yeah, like, they do. New York, you can see, they wake up like cases of guns in the mm-hmm. street and shit. Or Atlanta, it's a different way. It's not necessarily a case of guns yeah. or nothing. They give them the scam. Yeah, and then they, they go lock the up case. all the niggas that do the scam. Yeah, yeah. they let them build the case. He's yes. talking about that shit. They let them build the case for like, they let you build that shit for five, five, ten years. Yeah, and then, yeah it's stupid. down. Like, it's just crazy. But so with that, do you ever take um, the culture and put it in your music? I haven't. But actually, a collab I'm doing 
soon is actually with a girl, a Baltimore rapper. Nice. And I'm excited. She just texted me today and she was like, oh, I'm finishing my verse. And I said, I'm excited. Like, nice. And my plan is, and it's not necessarily a Baltimore song. Like, it's not that club vibe. Mm-hmm. But it's more poppy. But I know the sound is what people want here. Mm-hmm. And I want to do the video on Baltimore. Like, we already was talking about it. So I'm excited about that too. That's going to be. I'm trying to make some go-go music. Well, I'm about to. I'm about to make some go-go music. Let's do it. I'm good. Girl, pull up. <laughs> like, that's nothing. Club hit. That's some other shit. I'm dead ass. Cause I want, like you said, the city, especially like DC, PG and stuff. Yeah. It's getting gentrified like shit. And they've been they trying to sign DC away the for a long time. Yeah, yeah. they trying. Yeah. One thing about us, we resilient as shit. Mm-hmm. Like you gonna have to go through a lot to get us to just shut up. Like Atlanta, like I know, I know everybody know the history of Atlanta, and it's like when we, when I came to Atlanta, I was expecting something. I got something totally different. Mm-hmm. I was like, what happened to the culture here? Like, ain't no, I saw more white motherfuckers than black, and I know Atlanta was home of the black people, like mm-hmm. the successful black people, you know. So it's like I'm like, dang, what happened? And it's like, y'all, y'all can't go to Baltimore doing that shit. Like, we're going to beat y'all ass. We're going to fight. <laughs> we're going to fight you. We're going to shoot you. We're going to do whatever it takes. We keep you started in. fucking go-go's in the street, Mochella. Yeah, like, for lit. real. Like, it's, it's just crazy, though. Like, even when I go back home, like, it's not the same. It don't feel the same. No, it's not. It's not the same. It's different people. Yeah, and that's why I don't go home like that no more. Like, I... I I can't I can't wrap my mind around it cuz it's too it's too much it's too much to see like a lot of my friends they either did locked up or I don't talk to them no more like, that's real and my dad told me that before I graduated from school he said half of these motherfuckers you used to see Sean, they ain't even going you ain't even going to see them no more they're going to be dead locked up and he that's how he talk but <laughs> like he wasn't lying like that's what happened I had uh, had like five friends that died right after graduation mm. Like right after whether it was them being murdered or car accident, something. I like, think that's a part of life too, though. Like, yeah, it feels crazy when it's us, but everybody, everybody should go through, through that. Yeah, because everybody gotta go somehow. Because I grew up in the suburbs, niggas still died. You know what I'm saying? I did. T- don't get it twisted. I wasn't no just straight hood. <laughs> you know, even though Baltimore, a lot of people make jokes. The whole Baltimore hood, and it is. Don't get me wrong, but. I was mostly in Baltimore County. Like, okay. that's where I resided. My only thing is, is that I spent a lot of time in the city because my mom was an inner city school teacher. So I went to school in the city until high school. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so from elementary, middle school, I'm in the city. Right. Then high school, I went to Milford, which wasn't too far from the city. Like, I lived on the Baltimore City, Baltimore County line. So I was, like, right there where if you go straight, you're going to hit Emerson Village. And then you just going to be in the city. It's going to be on one side. Right there by your firm. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's like I, I was in the suburbs, but I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was one of them days, like, all of it was just fucked up. <laughs> it was just all fucked up. But but it goes to show it happened to, every, to everybody. Like, yeah. No matter where you from. No right matter where you from. And it don't, it, it, I don't know. Like, it do change. It change. It change your perspective. But like we always say, you can survive. <laughs> you can survive where I'm from. You can survive. Especially coming here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is the top? Okay. Yeah. I'm mind my business. And it's like, believe it or not, like, I ain't gonna lie, like, when I first moved here, it was hard. Because I was 19. I moved mm-hmm. here when I was 19. I ain't no shit. Okay. I came down here with a plan, and my plan was switched around because I got caught up in all the, like, life, Atlanta life partying. And okay. All of that stuff. And I lost track of my real reason why I came down here. It just was like, it just was thing after thing after thing. Mind you, I had never been hit by a car. All the type of fucking kicking, walking, and all that other shit I used to do in Baltimore never got hit by a car. When I moved down to Atlanta, five days I got hit by a car. Your body? My body. I was mad as shit. Like, I, was was mad. Like, I was on old national, not on national shit, not on national, Riverdale, Highway 85. I got off the bus. I was walking across the street in the crosswalk. Man, ran a stop, ran a stop like, Oh my god. Just boom. Price of 300. Big ass car. Just boom. You got that in my ass. Huh? You see the city? I didn't know nothing about nothing. 
Like, I'm being real. I, I didn't even know that when them lawyers be calling your phone and you know you ain't sending no lawyers your way, you're not supposed to talk to them. I didn't know that. So I talked to them. <laughs> and I started going to their chiropractor and stuff. And then when I called Atlanta Medical, bullshit, that hospital hit me that they shut down. When I, when I called Atlanta Medical, they I tried to get my records. They like, oh, your records locked. I said, what you mean they locked? Well, they like... They like, oh yeah, they locked. We can't give you your records. I'm like, what are you talking? They like, you gotta call that lawyer that you're using. So I called them. They like, what you need? My medical. I said, your medical records, nigga. Those my medical records. Like, yeah. I went to the hospital. What you talking about? They stopped answering their phone and everything. Like, I don't know what happened with the case. Honestly, they probably got paid for it, and I just ain't get paid for it. But scammers. For real, home of the scam. Tell me, for <laughs> home real. Of the scam. <laughs> But Atlanta Medical, when I got hit by a car, I honestly felt like they was trying to kill me low-key because I told the guy in the ambulance, I was like, I was like, I can't breathe with this neck brace on. Like, I need some water. I didn't pass out. It was a hard impact. It was really hard. It flipped. Like, I flipped. Mm -hmm. One of my, my flip-flops was up one row, and my other flip-flop was on the, in, on the street. When they hit me, they hit me at the red light, <clears throat> but then the light turned green. So I almost got ran over, mm -hmm. but I was, it's like I got hit, I flew up in the air, I hit the pavement, and then I like sat up on the pavement, but I didn't get up, I just sat up on the pavement, and I was just like crying, because I was scared, and I just saw people start running over to me, but I never passed out, I remember my passwords to my phone, they was able to get my phone, mm -hmm. calling the bitches that I had lived with at the time, nobody answered their phone. Um, was calling my parents. Finally, they answered the phone, and like that whole thing, got in the ambulance, telling him like I can't breathe, like this, this neck breaks too much, like I'm not, my neck not broken, mm -hmm. I'm fine, like I can't breathe though, I need some water. He's like, it's protocol. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I don't know, I just remember going through shock trauma, and it is how it how it be on TV, like that's scary, like it be all the white, like all I saw was white lights. <laughs> That's all I yeah. thought. I ain't see shit in front of me. I'm laying on the stretcher. All I'm seeing is white lights. I'm like, damn, this is just like TV. But some was just like, don't close your eyes. I don't know why, but something in my brain was like, don't close your eyes. So I didn't close them. I stayed awake the whole time. Yeah, Some bum people at that hospital ain't do no PET scan, ain't do no X ray, ain't do nothing. They put, they cut up on my clothes after I said I could take my clothes off myself. It's protocol. It was protocol for all that shit, but it wasn't protocol for y'all to do x-rays and shit on me, make sure I was okay. So, they put me in a room. I was in the room. A doctor came in. Oh, your impact was pretty hard. I'm shocked that you're still alive. Okay. Um, you didn't pass out or anything? No. Oh, okay. You you fell on your face on the pavement. You don't have any... I honestly, I didn't have no scratch or nothing on my face, and I fell on the pavement. And he was like, that's okay. Well, I guess you're fine then. Well, I'll just have the nurse come in and check in with you in a second. I'm waiting there. Nurse come in with discharge papers. I'm like, what the fuck? But I just got hit by a car, so I don't even have the energy to go back and forth for nobody. And so I'm like, I asked, I do remember asking, I said, y'all not going to check my leg or nothing to make sure it's not broken because I never... I don't know if I could walk or not. I didn't stand or anything. He was like, no, you should be fine. We didn't see any broken bones when we took your clothes off. I'm like, okay. So I went to stand up and I fell straight to the room because my ankle was sprained. Mm. So he didn't check to make sure that my ankle was sprained. He just gave me a boot and some crutches well, and said, mm. yeah, no, and said, enough. here you go. But I didn't know anything about like going through a lawsuit. And I ain't had nobody to sit there and teach me or tell me what to do. So at that point, like, I just was like, dang, like, all right. I, <laughs> I went through, believe it or not, that was the hardest time of my life because the girls I was living with, it was around BET weekend in Atlanta. They was out partying. Mind you, I just got hit by a car, so I can't really move. I'm on crutches. Ain't no food in the house. Mm. Like, I gotta go get my medicine. So I had to walk up Highway 85 on my crutches. Mm -hmm. And so I was on my crutches, walking up the street to the, at the time, it was one Rite Aid up that street. I went to the Rite Aid, got my medicine. 
And then I had to walk to go get me some food. And I had people like niggas trying to stop me to ride me. No, I don't want no ride from you. I'm good. I'm walking. <laughs> and so walking all the way back to that apartment, like, it was hard for me. It was really hard. And I was like, damn, like, these bitches really don't. Give a I don't fuck. really give a fuck. Like, mm-hmm. they don't even realize that I literally just got hit by a fucking car. Right. And y'all not going. They don't care. Like, that shit. They realize. They just don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, that. if that didn't tell me they weren't my friends then, then I still kept being friends. I just now cut them. Cut them off. Like, mm-hmm. let's, like, was that last year? Mm-hmm. Let's share. Let's share. That shit crazy. But, but that shit, it teach you how strong you could be, man. Yeah, that's the one thing. I went about in the survival mode. <laughs> My survival mode game is crazy. Okay, you. you be like, I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> do anything. Yeah. What can I do? Yeah, but Atlanta, I had some times in Atlanta, man. Things that never happened. Things that I would have thought would have happened to me in Baltimore, but it happened to me here, and I was just like, dang, like I ain't never think. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're on survival mode once you move up. Yeah, that's true. Once you get the hell on, you're on survival mode. Especially when your parents are there. Yeah. 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 Yeah
it's probably something you gotta you gotta see though. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. probably taking because that should be scary. Like it do. You like you be, you be especially thinking. to be really sober. Like mm-hmm. to be really sober and open yourself up with that stuff. You're gonna have to start seeing shit. That happens to me all the time. It's been happening to me since I was a kid. Like I've always seen shit, and that's a lot of the reason why he be like I don't be wrestling because I. Cause it's on face shit. Yeah, like, I was gonna right. say you, you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta. You need some counseling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. I went through counseling. Man. Man. Counseling. Face that shit. Everything. That's, that's that's it's scary though. I know. That's that shit. Shit. It's scary. No, I mean, have you ever been through that? I have. That yeah. shit is we've scary. We've been through it together. Like we've tapped into each other. We've been through it so strong where. I will be dreaming about something, and I'll be like, you know what? Let me touch her and see what she's dreaming about. I'll reach over and grab her and pop right in her shit, and she'll wake up the next morning and say, I had this dream about this. And I'm like, yeah, I was in your dream. I know. Mm. But I have dream. I had dreams where I was fighting demons and shit, but I would fight them, but I'd be hit. I'd swing slow. Mm-hmm. You know, but you win. Mm-hmm. And I keep telling her, I'm like, you got to face it. me, my dreams don't really be about... My dreams, the scary thing about my dreams sometimes is it be people. Like, it be dead people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that that right there, because I've, I've experienced where I've woken up and seen a figure in front of me. Mm-hmm. And it's like a... And I was like, and I had to tell him, like, this person's just standing right... Like, it's... And I'm a traveler. So I mm-hmm. travel a lot in my sleep, too. And that's a whole nother thing because I don't have control over it. It just happens whenever it's supposed to happen. And sometimes it'll, like, the, the process of traveling... When I know I'm about to, I've snapped out of it before. I've just now started learning how to snap out of it. But that sinking feeling that you feel it's when you scary. go to sleep, and then you go paralyzed, and then you can't breathe. It's like you feeling your soul leave your body. Yeah. And that feeling right there is a scary ass feeling, but that's the feeling I always feel. Sometimes I just let, I'll be so tired to where I just let it happen. Or sometimes I'll be like, in and out, like, Mm-hmm. Like that's how I'm moving around, and they wake some up. He like you okay, and I'm like, like it's trying, they're trying to take me. Like how he's always saying, they're trying to take me. Like they're trying to make me go here. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go mm-hmm. here. There's been some nights where she stopped breathing. She yeah, she's supposed to be on medicine or something. Yeah, nah, she needs to smoke. She needs to smoke. I, I don't. I, I feel like smoking is gonna smoke. make me have it. I, even I think work. you just gotta face it. Yeah, for yeah. real, for real. Whatever it is, you gotta face it. Like. I'm, I just got to that point where I can't, I've always been able to, not always, but I've been to a point where I can know that I'm in my dream mm-hmm. and like do shit or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah. now I get to that sinking feeling, but I understand yeah, that's like my consciousness is separating from yeah. this, but it's still scary to me right now. So I jump out. Yeah. yeah I used yeah, to yeah, get yeah. scared of sleep paralysis because uh, you can't move. Mm-hmm. But, but see, it's astral projection. It, yeah. yeah, it's not sleep. No, it, it's it's similar. So it's like when your body get paralyzed yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, it's scientific. <laughs> anyway, when your body get paralyzed like that, you gotta be strong enough spiritually to be like mm-hmm. you gotta move. Like when you try to move, you moving in real life. Mm-hmm. Just move. All you gotta do is move. If you move, that's what I be doing. You'll get up and you'll turn directions. I don't sleep on my back. Mm-hmm. She said I should. Technically, because we're supposed, you are supposed to, to, like the Egyptians back in the days, they would sleep on their back because first, first things first, when you sleep on your side, we all wonder why we all have back issues or why our back always hurting or why our posture is not straight. It's because when we're sleeping on our side, we're bending our spinal cord. Mm-hmm. And so over time, our spinal cord continues to bend because yeah, I'm in a medical field too. It to continues to bend and then next thing you know, you got all these different back issues or your hunched back or something. And a lot of people don't know it comes from how you sleep in. Mm-hmm. Just like you're not supposed to sleep on your stomach. I sleep like I'm in a casket. You sleep on your back. So you sleep mm-hmm. on your back. You sleep like this. Mm-hmm. That's how you're supposed to sleep. That's how you're one with yourself and God. That's why the like pharaohs and stuff, they used to sleep like this. And people would walk into their room. It looked creepy as hell to see somebody sleeping like that. But... It keeps your back aligned, it keeps your posture straight, and it keeps your mental where it's supposed to be. And it allows you to have control over what you see in here. And it also allows you to be able to, when it's time to travel, you can do it and come back peacefully. 
It was a, we joked about that uh, a couple weeks ago. A girl said, "How you gonna protect the house with your ass?" Like, <laughs> 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 no real shit though. Real shit though. That's no for real though. <laughs> for real, how are you? Because like, sleeping like that ball toy story. I don't want to see it. The little bad yeah, yeah, boy had yeah. ass up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> you remember what you said? It was damn. That's crazy. Like nah, that that's some real shit. You gotta think about it though. How are you? No, like, I, can, I can hear a pan drop. He can. Like, he got yeah, everything. Like, that's my, how I he got a little dog. In my we got a little bitty dog. That nigga seven pounds. That motherfucker might tap the gate. Oh yeah, we. I could be in the he, middle he, of a sleep. I'd be like, shunt. Yeah, he wake me. Was. Like, yeah, I wake and up. I and the crazy thing is, I hear it in my sleep, but I don't. I don't wake up. I just hear it. But see, I went to military school, so it's kind of like when they had put us in the woods for two months. When we was in the woods, I heard everything. I got PTSD from this shit. I can hear anything at nighttime. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I got the music playing, the TV got frequencies on it. I don't care. If I hear something in the kitchen, see, she called me white. I go check it out. Yeah, he I ain't the type of nigga to sit right there in the back and be like, hey, what you <laughs> see? What you see if you come back problem. here? No, I'm going to go see what it is because... I do that too. I grab my gun. I just exactly. go downstairs. See, like, he just, see. You know, but see, no, like phone. in your house, yeah, but I'm talking about some like one night we was driving past this school and this some real shit. We was driving past this school. This is like a couple, like, couple weeks ago. And it was this school bus. And I said, is the school bus on? Like it was weird because it was like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. So I'm like, is the school bus on? And he like, it damn sure is on. And we started driving slower and nobody was on the school bus. And he like, let's go see if somebody. I said, <laughs> hell no. Let's keep fucking moving. Somebody probably sleeping on the bus. Man, <laughs> hell no. That be set ups, bro. These people are trying to take people, kill them. That be right. set ups for robbery, you everything. Like homeless you ain't had nowhere to stay. Man, how the hell he turned the school bus heat on and shit? How you do that? How you start that motherfucker? Inside the bus? How, yeah. yeah. How, how they, might have, they might have left the keys in the, um... Yeah, on school bus, they leave the keys in there. So I ain't gonna go I'm not gonna go check it out. They ain't my motherfucker. Yeah, like, I don't even fuck about that bus or whoever on that bus. No, I'm gonna go in the damn bus. I don't, I ain't wanna get close to that bus. bus. No, no. <laughs> I just wanna see if it was actually on, cause sometimes, uh... I don't even wanna see what that What you was gonna do, right? I don't wanna see shit. He's one of them fucking people. That's why I call him a white person, cause Or somebody shooting or some shit like that. I get the hell on. What if you walk up to the bus and they shoot? Right. Then what you gonna do? Well, no, get I'm shot? Not, no, I'm already on guard for that. He is on guard a lot. Very so he 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 will be so ready. You, you gonna be fucking peeking around, peeking around the corner? No, he the, he the type shit. of person that, like you said, grab your gun in the house. He the type of person to do that like curry. Like no, he gonna no, grab his gun like, and walk up to the bus like. I ain't even put myself on no pedestal. I'm a walking Rambo. Like, right. I will fuck you up. Like, I'm, I'm one of them people that are duck behind the corner and you won't even see me and I shoot you. But it's just one of them things. You, you I was, do shit like a video game. Yeah. <laughs> you be like, oh. but I feel you with I was thing. raised like that, though. The sound yeah. and shit. The sounds, they fuck with me, though. My dog, he be getting on. He, he, he fuck with me sometimes. He be tapping the little gate. Yeah, he do be tapping. Hey, Bobby? Balls. He be fucking with us. No, let me tell you something. I that dog is not a dog. He's smart as hell. He is a smart motherfucker. He, smart. Smart. he learned how to get, mind you, he's small. He learned how to get out of a tall ass tent mm. by himself to the he, point where he had me thinking some Yorkie crazy poodle, shit. The little bitty miniature Yorkie Poodle, that's how big he is. He like this big and this wide, this long. And it's a tent, it's tall. That motherfucker crawl up the tent, pull it down, bite on it. Pull it back and jump out. I said, how the fuck is it? But it's because I taught him. But when you tell him to do it again, while you there, he won't do it. He'll start barking at you to let you know, like, I don't know what you're talking about. He lying. For real? Like, it's weird. But, like, with him, like, he had saved my life a couple... When I was a baby, I used to stop breathing in my sleep. And I had had a conversation with my mom in 2019 because I had started dreaming about some weird shit, like shit that I don't practice. Like, I started having dreams about different deities and shit. And I was like, um, I don't dream about them. I I don't know them. Mm -hmm. And I had to, like, research. And I talked to my mom. She said, well, you've always 
since she was a baby. That's why she she said she never allowed me to have imaginary friends because she knew that my imaginary friends probably wasn't going to be imaginary. Mm. Was it right when you um got mo- molested? Mm-mm, this is since I was a baby. She said when I was a baby, I used to talk like talk to people it's behind like, her, mm. and she would look behind her, nobody was there. And then when I got older, I remember this. Now this was after now. When I was with my biological father, he traumatized the hell out of me. So he wouldn't feed me like that. And so he, he honestly, like, <laughs> mentally would terrorize me. He would be like, you my little demon, you my little devil. And if you go, the way the house was set up, you walk in, it's the, it's my older brother's room, the living room, some stairs that go down. Then if you walk around this way, past the living room, it's the bathroom, my biological father room, my room. And so if you come back towards the front door and go down the stairs, that's where the kitchen and stuff was. So the house was built, built weird. The kitchen mm-hmm. wasn't upstairs. It was downstairs. And so he used to say, like I said, he ain't feed me. So he used to be like, oh, you my little devil. And if you go down there at the, in the middle of the night, the demon's going to come out and get you. Mm. And so... Me being a kid, I was so hungry. I used to go downstairs in the basement, and I would be terrified as shit. Like, I would be so fucking scared. But I would go down there. I open up the refrigerator. I used to get butter. I used to eat the butter because I didn't. I was only, like, probably, like, five. I didn't know how to put nothing in the microwave or nothing like that. So I would eat, like, sticks of butter. And the only thing I can remember seeing is it being dark. The refrigerator light of me opening up eating the butter and I was standing there with the refrigerator door open and then I remember it being plastic and a red light over here mm. I just don't I never went back there to see what was back there I just know it was plastic and a red light but I do remember over time I just kept doing it it became like second nature to me to the point where I stopped being scared to go down there I was just it was almost as if like going down there to eat the butter was my comfort mm-hmm. And so, from there, like, I used to hear things and see things down there. And I don't, I can't, I can honestly tell you, I don't remember my experiences down there. I literally just remember going down there every night eating butter. That's it. I can't tell you if I had a friend down there. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I was comfortable after a while. And then once I came, once my mom finally got me back and all of that stuff I remember um they used to watch this show back in the day I can't remember the name it wasn't Twilight Zone it was another show it's where they would like talk about all the paranormal shit Mm -hmm. that would happen to people or whatever and it was this one lady on the TV where she had a mirror and she would always see a lady pop up in the mirror and I, my mom did not want me watching the show, but I used to sneak and like look look behind the wall and try and low key watch the show because I was interested. And man, that shit bit me in the ass. I walk, I came home and I always had a big ass mirror on the dresser. I always had that. I came home and I was sleeping and I looked at the mirror and I thought I saw a lady pop up too. <laughs> and I was scared, bro. I was so fucking scared. But then when we moved in with my grandmother, it's like, that's when it all, like, heightened for me. Like, because I had found out my pop-pop had passed away. And um, I remember telling my mom that I had saw a man hanging in the hallway. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I said, it was a man last night hanging in the hallway, and he scared me. And she was like, Shawnee, no, no man in the hallway. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it was. And it made her research the house, come to find out a man killed himself mm-hmm. in the house by hanging himself. Mm-hmm. So it creeped her out a little bit, but she wasn't too shocked. Then one night I saw, like, I was sleeping. My mom used to keep my door open. Now I sleep with my door closed. Oh, but my mom, my mom used to keep my door open. So all that darkness from the hallway and shit was there. Like, right. she never let me close my door at night. And so, when, um, one night I was asleep, and I just so happened to just open my eyes, and I saw this face, 
and it looked like my mom's face, but the, she was blue. And when she was like, it looked like she was crying. And so, but the face started getting closer to my face. So I screamed. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, ah, and I'm like, mommy, mommy. And my mom and my dad came to my room and they were like, um, what's wrong? And I said, I saw your face, you were crying. And come to find out she had literally just got finished crying. Mm-hmm. She didn't tell me why she was crying, but she had just got finished crying. And so from then on, when we went to church, because I grew up with a church background, like it was a prophet who came and she was like, I want to talk to you and your daughter. At this point, I'm like 13. And she's like, your daughter's going to see and hear things that she doesn't understand. And it's on you to kind of help her through it. And from then on, like, I remember asking, when I was 10, I remember asking God to, like, take it away. I said, I don't want to see nothing no more. I don't want to hear nothing no more. And he did. Like, I didn't until I got hit by the car down here. And I was by myself in that apartment I was in. And I heard some shit calling my real name. And that shit was weird as fuck. And I said, wait a second. To the point my phone stopped working. Because I was waiting on somebody to come to the house. My phone stopped working. The TV was stuck. Like, the DVD on the TV was paused. Like, it was stuck. And I was like, I'm flicking. I'm like trying to click shit, I'm trying to call people, and it's like not nothing's happening. And then I hear the voice. I got my fucking crutches and I hopped my ass out the door. Like I got out the door because I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm not fucking with that. Not this again. And yeah, that's exactly where I was at. And so from then on, like it's been like heightened, especially when I got with him. It like went to the extreme. And I was like, oh, God. But now I'm more so, like, I'm okay with it. And I'm able to kind of, like, maneuver through it a little bit more now. Because Lord knows it was hard back then. It was real hard. I be trying to open it. Open. I don't know. Open that door. Not open that door for, like, people and yeah. shit. But, like, yeah, just so. knowledge. Like, I want to. Yeah. I already know. I, I feel like I be hearing stuff. I feel like I live a, a certain way, and as I keep on going, I learn more stuff that validate the way that mm-hmm. I operate. But right now, we're in a season of the way we're all hearing everything. Like everybody's senses are on an extreme high. Like even down to ringing. Like I don't know if y'all be sitting down sometimes, and then you just hear ringing mm-hmm. out your left ear or ringing yes. out your right ear, and that should be annoying as fucking. You like, yeah, what the fuck? Most of the I time, like, yeah, that's. Yeah, most of the time, that's your that's your audi that's your audience that's trying to like click itself on so you could hear mm-hmm. what's coming from wherever. Yeah, what's coming from wherever, whatever's trying to get in communication with you, and even down to people's dreams. People need to start paying attention to your dreams because most of the time, your dreams not dreams. Most of the time, that's it is what it is, and like even with like um. What you see, like, you know that that moment of when you half sleep, half woke, mm-hmm. and you start hallucinating mm-hmm. and seeing shit. Most of the time, you really see them. That shit is real. Say. I had a, um, a client, and just when I had met the client, I was driving for left. And so that's the only time where I start, like, dozing off and, like, hallucinating. Oh, it always shit. happens when you're in a car and you're on the road. You Drive, see everything. Yeah. So I was dozing off driving, and this big ass wolf, like a big wolf face, looked like it was coming in my car. Type of shit. That was what woke me up to like keep on driving. Mm-hmm. I get on Thanksgiving. I go the client that I met invited me and my man over, and mm-hmm. I go the same fucking wolf that I saw in my head was on his wall. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the That's fuck? Dope. That shit was crazy. That, but it yeah, was yeah. though. And maybe I was like, okay, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? No, it was probably just telling you that that's what you was about to be in that space. Yeah, that, that's exactly. the crazy thing because that happened to me when I went to the crystal shop. I had I had a daydream about the labyrinth. I don't know if y'all ever seen the labyrinth. Mm-hmm. It was a movie with David Bowie. It's like a like one of them rock type mm-hmm. movies. But I used to watch it as a kid, and I saw the labyrinth, and I'm like the labyrinth. I'm thinking, do I need to watch the movie again? What am I doing? And then I go into the crystal shop and I'm just looking at like their cars and tarot cards. Like I'm just looking. I'm not like looking to do or get anything. And then I see Labyrinth cards. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck? This is what I just saw. But I looked next to the Labyrinth cards and it was these soul, these soul cards. And these soul cards, like, they they caught my attention immediately to where I picked them up and I took them to the front. And I asked the lady, I said, do you, she, I was like, what are these? And she was like, I got some, I just got them in. Like, let's 
I would bring them out so you could see them. And it was literally a deck full of faces. Mm. Different kinds of faces. And it was so weird. I bought the cards. And I actually had my experience with the cards. And I have never touched them cards again. I only touched them cards one time. Or? Because I didn't know what I was getting myself. She was trying to tell me, but she didn't tell me. I didn't know what I was getting myself into until I was reading. So most of the time, these decks of cards, they come with... Um, they come with like little books, mm-hmm. little manuals, like just teaching you like how to do them different ways, things like that. And so I was reading that before anything. And so I was reading through the manual and it was like, yeah, so welcome to such and such cards. And um, these cards are here to build an experience for you to build relationships with them. I said relationships. Like the, I'm I'm depicting each word because I'm like relationships. What do you mean you can't relationship with a card? No. Mm-hmm. And then it started going in more depth, and it's like, yeah, these are different, like, um, like deities and entities and different people. So you need to like kind of embody these people. And I'm like, oh, wait a second, these are like medium cards. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so it t- it instructs you. It says first, you need to ground yourself completely. So get rid of any negative intention. Get rid of all of that stuff. The cards are not meant, like, it goes into detail. The cards are not meant for evil. These things are not evil. These are not demons. These are just people. And I and I was like, okay. So I grounded myself, and I just picked the card out of the deck. The crazy thing is the same card that I picked was the same card I saw in the store mm-hmm. that caught my attention. So I saw the face, and I said, and it tells you, stare at the card until the card comes to life. And I'm like, I ain't gonna fucking come to life. Like, this is bullshit. Like, in my head, I'm just going back and forth with myself. Mm-hmm. And I just start staring at the card. I'm still playing my meditation music. I, I enhance the crown chakra because that's the chakra that's above your head. So that's your spirit. Mm-hmm. So I'm enhancing that so that way I can even get to that point. And so I'm looking at the card and then I be damned. The card did start coming to life. The face started moving around. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck is <laughs> like, like, what the fuck is this? And so I'm telling him, he's in the kitchen. I'm in the living room because it says to be around people or if you're going to do it by yourself, be completely by yourself. So I felt more comfortable because it was my first time being around someone that I'm comfortable. I asked him, I said, don't leave mm-hmm. out of this room while I'm doing this because I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. So I'm going through and then all I remember is telling him, telling him that the person in the car kept talking to me like they want me to leave like they kept talking to me and then the next thing I remember is him asking me you remember what you wrote on the board I'm like what he like read that you don't you don't remember writing that I had a whole conversation with him didn't I Mm -hmm. but I didn't talk Mm -hmm. I wrote it all I was writing and I was like that's crazy I never touched him five again. <laughs> what you say? I well, what did he that person? I mean, he knows more than I do, but from what he had told me, like I was like telling him like the person's name and they knew him and they had been around. So it was someone for him that that knew him mm. that that I tapped into or that needed to talk to him because it was a intimate conversation between them two through me, but through writing. Was it good? It was. It was. It was different because she was holding the board, and when she was writing on the board, it was like it was just weird. Like she wasn't talking to nothing. Like I would say, I would ask her the question about my childhood to see if it was really her bullshitting. Or if it was really, you know, a deity or whatever it was. And they said, it was like, no, I've been here your whole life. I used to move your car truck, you know, remember? And I was like, what what car truck? What color was it? And it was like, it was doing black and red. And I kept thinking, I said, a truck. And I was like, oh, I used to have a little Mario truck. And the motherfucker did used to move sometimes. But I, as a kid, you're not worried about it. But I did used to have these little... Vision, not vision, I don't know what it was. It was a elf. Yeah, it was a little elf or a dwarf. Mm-hmm. Whatever it was. Little hat, you actually little hat. Oh yeah, he told me that. 
<laughs> bro, if it was a movie, you would laugh. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know that yeah. shit from it. Oh, that little, yeah. that little yeah. shit that was running around the house, that's all I can think about when you do that. I was like, like you see the top of the nigga hat, like on the table, like you just see the top of his hat, he just be popping, bouncing around. Motherfucker just jump on the bed. And I used to, I couldn't move. That's why I was telling her about the paralysis and stuff. Like, I I went through all this shit early. So, I couldn't move and the motherfucker used to jump on me. Like, come on, let's play, let's play, let's play. I'm like, what the fuck? And when I could move, I'd run out the room and go to my mom with a sleeping bag and sleep next to her. And my mom was like, ain't nothing in here. And I was like, something in here. I knew it was because I still have dreams about that house. Mm-hmm. Whatever she was talking to knew exactly what was going on back then. And it was like, I've been here to protect you. And I said, so what are you? Mm-hmm. It was like, in your world, you would call me a spirit. In reality, I am a god. Or a deity. That's what she wrote on the board, and I knew I knew she wasn't playing. So I was like, okay. So I just remember coming out my mouth was so fucking dry, bro. Yeah, I was like, I was so like, I said, so how you? So water. what am I? I was like, what am I? And it was like you're part of a a tribe. What's the tribe called? Um, oh, oh, you said yeah, yeah, militia. It was a tribe military. called militia, military. So, and that explains why I moved the way I moved today. And it was like I've been here this whole time for you. I've been protecting you this whole time. That's why nothing's happened. That's why this, that, and the third is going on. So then they started talking about her and saying, this is a stubborn one. Before I send her back, is there anything you need to ask me? I was like, that motherfucker was rude. <laughs> yeah. And both my grandparents died this year. And they said, um, there's something for you under a house in a locker. And the, I said, well, what's the locker number? And it was like, one six zero one six. My grandma address is one six zero six. They both just died. Like she died in March. My granddad died in August. And they actually have lockers in their basement. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of clothes covering them. You won't even notice them unless you just really been down there. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. My mom keep calling me. She's like, we need to go clean the house out. And it kept saying, make sure you check the lockers. And I'm a look now. I'm a little nervous because I'm like, damn. And I left it on the board so she could read it when she came back. Yeah. And she read it. And she was like, what the hell is this? I was like, I don't know. But when it's time, I'm going to check this locker or whatever it is. Because it said it was it was under the house at 16106, not 16006. So mm. it was weird, though. It was crazy. Them cards ain't no joke. That, all that. I only did it one time. I never touched them cards. I touched my other cards. Like, I have, like, moon phase cards and stuff. Like, them, them ain't nothing. Them cards, though, was a total. I wasn't even. I can't say I wasn't ready because I wouldn't been led to them if my mm-hmm. spirit wasn't ready. My spirit might be ready, but my physical ain't ready for that. I would so. advise everybody to go get a pendulum, though. Like, That's just crazy. Go get too. one of those because. It, Mind you, I'm not. I still believe in God and Jesus. Yeah, like, like but I'm, this this is crazy. It's, it's like, you know, with eight balls, you should mm-hmm. shake them. When you it's, was a kid. Yes, you just hold <laughs> the pendulum it. pendulum and the yes and no. Yeah, you just hold it. You don't even move it. That shit will literally, like, I swear and I promise you, that shit will start swinging. And it stops. And you'll be, it'll mm-hmm. stop. Like, if you say, I don't know, if you be like, if you skinny and you be like, am I fat? And it's like, and it's swinging yes at first, that shit will literally stop and be like, no. Mm-hmm. Or to say rephrase. Or to say or rephrase. Maybe. And I'm like, what the fuck? When I did that shit, I was like, oh, this is scary. This is scary. I've like- never held one myself, but my friend, she does readings, and she's mm-hmm. done that for me. And I swear, like, everything that I asked, that shit was spot on. Right? I heard that's that shit, man. Joke. That's like, joke. even my card, like, my cards, I just started actually carrying my cards with me, but I don't necessarily do readings on people. I only do readings when I feel like I should, but. Like, I mostly do readings on myself. One time I did read him without his permission, and I had apologized, but I still wanted, I did it anyway. But, um, like, the readings with the cards that I had, the moon phase cards be so, because they're based off of, like, astrology, so they're based off of, like, signs and all of that stuff. So it'll be, like, full moon in Aries or last moon in Aquarius or something like that. And I can say the readings that I have done have all been correct. Mm-hmm. And it creeped, it was so, it was so weird to me, it creeped me out. I was like, oh shit, like, 
How did that? That shit get me excited though. Yeah, it's, it's exciting like, oh. to know that that oh. these things that are out here that we're taught that we were taught are evil or not of God or whatever. It makes you double think it because it's like, wait a second. When you do get deep into the Bible, it talks about these things. It talks about them, and so it's like, if you're talking about them, they weren't. I think it's it's it falls back on your intentions. Like, mm -hmm. how do you use these things? Are you using them on a dark level, or are you using them to get closer within the God that's inside of you? Right. So it's just like, it's just all it's it's just when I tell you my. All of this started once I did my weight loss journey and after my mom passed. Like, after my mom passed and I made the decision, like, I'm tired of being fat and I want to lose weight and for my health, like, I don't want to get sick or anything like that. Like, all of the spiritual things, all of that stuff, it just kind of fell in line with what I was already doing. And it just opened up my entire mental to something, like, totally different to where now... When I say, when I was telling you about my friend circle being some to none, like, people don't come around us. No, people don't even feel comfortable in our house anymore. The energy too strong. Yeah. Like, like bad energy can't stick around. Or, like, a, just the opposing energy can't deal with mm -hmm. each other. For real. I always tell her, it's like, you know, when you're on the highway and you hop over in the fast lane and it's a slow motherfucker over there and you got to go around them. It's the same way vibrations and frequencies are, right? So, it's like... If you got a motherfucker that you used to know and you you on this fast high vibrational frequency and this person they done caught up you like, Yeah, what's going on? Alright, cool, I'm gonna fuck with you and you keep going. Yeah. That's how life is. It's like a you talk a little bit, you cool, yeah, I know you bro. Alright. Like I keep going, yeah. Cause you bullshit and caught yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's how I tell her to look at life because I don't know how to explain stuff to her for real unless it's a, you know. Um, a scenario or something like that, but how do you feel about it? I wasn't paying attention. I know you wasn't. <laughs> that's that, that that different lane shit. He was like, "It's not my lane." I switch. Mean, I feel you. But, it's not everybody. Yeah, but yeah, I try to get her to look at life like that sometimes. But like she said, everybody gotta, and I had to learn that everybody gotta go about stuff however they go about it. Like mm -hmm. they learn their own way, and I'm. I'm guilty of it. Like, it takes something to alter the way that you doing stuff. If mm -hmm. this already works for me, mm -hmm. it makes sense to me, this is what I'm going to stick to until mm -hmm. something That's major. Something major. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me. Like, me, I've always been on this level, honestly, but, like, it just kind of enhanced, and I haven't deterred, like, how I normally would. Like, I used to deter a lot and be like, eh, I'm just going to go back here. This is what I'm comfortable because this too real for me. But... Now I'm just over here, and I'm comfortable being over here. There are times I'm uncomfortable, but I'm un I'm comfortable with being uncomfortable mm -hmm. over here. And so like, I put myself in there. Yeah, yeah, and so it's like I don't know, like even with even with like you know, I had friends like how like how he just was like you know I ain't really into that like that. I had friends that are like that. And I respect, one thing about me, I respect people's boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try and put nothing on nobody or make nobody believe because that's what they do with us with religion. Exactly. Yeah, they were like that. Like, like, oh like, I can't, I can't, I'm not about to sit up there and be like, you going, you going, duh, 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 mm -hmm. and you need, no. I'm going to ask you. Like how I had did Shorty Rock, I said, can I do a reading on you? I'm going to ask you. And at first he was like, no. And I'm like, are you sure? Because something is telling me to do a reading on you. And so no, he and is different. He, I, if I would have brought him up here, this dude is big as hell. This dude like six nine. His head would touch them. Yeah, like he's tall as shit. <laughs> he, he from Atlanta too. He, but he's very, very different. He's not into it like that for real. He's not either, but he's very smart. And you want, when you see him, you'll think he's just some thug nigga from Atlanta, but he is very smart. That man is intelligent. And he had He's questions. Real. Like, he had a lot of questions. Yeah. And I was ready for all of them. Like, he he was like, all right, I'll let you do it. I said, all right, I'm just going to shuffle the cards, whatever, fall, fall, and then 
I'm just gonna go from there. He's like, all right, cool. And so I'm shuffling, three fall out. And when I when he let me read to him like the explanation, because it's not like tarot cards. These are I deal with oracle cards. Oracle cards are more in depth and they are they aren't so Right. Yeah, they're not to where I can make up my own perception mm -hmm. of what the card means. No, the card is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's why I like oracle cards because they it's it's really it's almost like reading a fucking book. Yeah, like I open up my book, I look at it, I read to you what it is, I show you the picture, and then I open up my book and I go to where it is and then I read it to you. And then if it resonates with you, it does. And most, and every time, I can't even say most of the time, every time that I've done it on someone, it has always resonated. Like with, with Shorty Rock, he, he was shocked. He said, damn, damn, that shit was well, true. To the point where he took, a, he, he took a picture of him and then I didn't even know he was going to post them, but he had posted it on Instagram one day. Mm. And I was like, this was from a person who wasn't, into it yeah like he ain't, and he probably still ain't but he was okay with it in that moment yeah. so it's just like right now like i'll be telling people right now we're in a space and time where everything's coming to the surface it is and so it ain't no more like wondering things are gonna be put to you as how they are and it's on you whether however you gonna take it or not like all these movies about people coming out of the fucking water and shit like i bet i've been on look ask him ask him, since i was a little girl like i pump even with the mermaid shit since i was a little girl i have been i told my mom i saw a mermaid when we was on a cruise because i was on the lido deck when i wasn't supposed to it was pouring down raining it was a rock in the middle of the goddamn ocean we were the boat was going past it i saw a fucking hand that looked like my hand and that motherfucker waved and went back into the water and I don't know where it went. And I'm like, there wasn't no person waving to get help. Like, mm -hmm. no, that motherfucker was chilling and then they waved and went into the water. And I ran into I'm, the cabin. I want y'all to think about something when y'all leave tonight. Y'all both y'all both believe in God, the devil, all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I I always think it's the devil though. Huh? You don't think it's a devil? You don't. But you you believe, I agree with you. you. You believe in God, yeah. right? Okay. You believe in heaven and hell. Or just heaven. I just believe in God. You believe in God. You don't believe in the heaven and hell thing, right? All right. So for the people who do believe in that, I always tell them if all this shit about God built a firmament right around mm -hmm. Earth, there's waters above and waters waters below, right? Mm -hmm. People always say heaven is above. Okay. If heaven is above or wherever heaven is, I always tell people. They can discover galaxies and universes and all this bullshit, which I highly believe. I feel like they fly to another part of the earth they won't know shit about. And then they, yeah, we're on the moon. And an astronaut suit looks just like a scuba diver suit. I feel like the ocean is a portal. And I don't care what nobody say, no man possible has made it to the very bottom of the ocean. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. They only discover 5% of the ocean. Yeah, the Bermuda the Triangle, triangle can't nobody go through it. You got to go around it, motherfucker. So the Bermuda Triangle, people go in there, they disappear for 10 years, and they come back. You can't go so deep, right, because the pressure from the water yeah, kills you. Right? 40 kill you. meters down to kill you. It's yeah. pressure. But they build things to go light years away where motherfuckers gone for 50 years and then come back. How is back. that possible? How is that even possible? That's not possible. So you got to I think, never heard of that. I never heard of it. You never heard of an astronaut going for like 10 years? They, because light those years. space stations out there. Yeah, those space yeah. stations, they be out there for they be 20 out there years. And light, when they come yeah. back, they look like how they did when they, they were they're, out there. They're preserved. Yeah. But shit space good. wouldn't preserve you that way. Water would. Mm -hmm. Water will preserve you. You got to think about water. Like water can kill you or keep you alive. Water is one of them things. When they down there in them damn submarines, you don't know how deep they trying to go. It's dark as hell, just like space. Don't nobody know where they at. They can say, oh, we're in the rocket. We floating around. And they floating like this. Water make you float. Mm -hmm. You got to think about that shit. People use this shit, like, I swear. In this firmament, there is a sun and there's a moon. In this firmament, to keep us protected 
from asteroids. Ain't no goddamn such thing as asteroids. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in asteroids. Because there's an asteroid mandate this shit. They done done something wrong and this mm-hmm. motherfucker flying across the sky. Ain't no asteroids coming here. It's just like fire firmament. and water. How the hell is it? Huh? Like fire and water. Lava? No, like, remember that ring of fire that was in the that middle of the oil. ocean? That was oil. You can, we did that in fuck? science class. You can make a tornado in science class. I know, class. but it's just weird as shit to me. That's but, like that rainforest burning down. Yeah. 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 How the fuck does well, no, this shit? That and shit that, comes from oil. Oil can make anything burn, which is gasoline. Yeah. You can put oil on water right now and light it on fire, shit will be on fire. Mm-hmm. You can make a tornado in a fish tank. Mm-hmm. We did it in science class. They teach you how to do all this shit, but what you don't realize is they can they create fake clouds. Mm-hmm. You see the little thing the machine. Yeah, the machine. Clouds the clouds machine. Out. Yeah. Like I was like, this shit is crazy. But I always tell people I want people to really think about that. Think about the ocean. Why can't they discover the ocean? They say, oh, it's too much water pressure. It's going to pop your ears and your head will explode. How the hell y'all go out of space? And why we can't breathe out of space? For instance, like, when you think it about a rocket. It all makes sense to water. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Even when you think about a rocket, when the rocket go up, they teach you. When the rocket go up, right, pieces fall off. How don't we know that that motherfucker that's going up is not where the people are? What if the people are at the bottom of the rocket the or in that fell. middle part where the pieces fall off? Because they and always the rocket, they have to shoot a rocket, rocket up curved. around water. The rocket curves. They can't shoot it up without water. It don't go straight up. That motherfucker curves. It curves. It curves. It curves. If you pay attention to a rocket, that motherfucker go up. What the fuck do we know? And then they curve like that. So it don't it never goes out of space. I don't There's know. No point where in that such shit thing. Like even even like you know, being from where we from, we around the Smithsonian and shit. Air and Space Museum is where we always go for every mm-hmm. fucking field trip. Nah, for real. Like, that's right by the fucking White House. That's the government. And I encourage everybody to go to the, go to the Smithsonian and go to every fucking museum there because it teach you a lot. But As an adult. So. Yeah, as an adult where you could really understand. But the Air and Space Museum, they put you in a fucking rocket, bro. Like, you can get in this rocket and you can feel how that shit move around and all of that stuff. And they show you on the screen what it'll look like and it's like i've been to nasa when they when they came out with roving mars the movie it was like back in 06 i still had like all the stuff like the t-shirts and shit but when i went to nasa space station and i went to see the movie i was in that bitch like one of the only kids woke like really trying to figure out how that robot moving around like that on them hot ass rocks where it's nothing but sun and it's dry as shit like the robot not going to dry out you know, like, been on that ride at the fair when it spin and you land straight up. And oh yeah, no, we got on. Yeah. Up. Y'all been on that? Mm-hmm. At NASA, they got on, they got some they got something just like that at NASA. It let you feel like how it feel when a rocket take off. Yeah. That's the same way a submarine feel. Mm-hmm. They it's the same shit. When I did scuba diving class, when you gotta fall off the boat and go back, the water when you go down deep enough, the water pressure makes it feel the same way you can't move that good that's why most school that pump on the back ain't just for air that shit help you float and ain't that weird that in order for you to get in the water you need oxygen in order for you to be out of space you You need need oxygen oxygen. exactly that's what i always tell people to think about that and then when you think about like when you think about i've been studying egyptians lately because i honestly feel like those were the people with all the answers but when you look at the Egyptian times and you look at the shit they drew, their high, what are they called? Hieroglyphics. Yeah. yeah. So when you look at those things and you, first of all, where the fuck they get crayons from? I be, I be saying crayons okay. because how the fuck they able to color people in blue, in purple, pink? Like, what the fuck Nine. was y'all using? <laughs> like, where y'all getting this shit from? Because y'all ain't have shit we had today, so please tell me. But where did they come up with the they had to find the tools to create these colors that they were seeing mm-hmm. like how 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 like how did y'all see the, this wasn't from the imagination it couldn't have been because back then the imagination wasn't even a thing like they were firm on what they see it was all about what you see and so it's like, 
I think about it, I'm like, where the fuck did y'all find the colors to color these bitches in with horse faces and shit? Where did you see these people at? Where you see these cat faces and shit? And then all of a sudden you see that you see cat faces and horse faces and wolf faces and shit like that. And I can have a cat and a dog in my house. And I'm wondering why my cat, like, I, I love cats. He don't like cats. I love cats. He's cats are the cats. most spiritual animals a person could ever have. A cat is going to tell you when a motherfucker ain't right. You heard, like, they eat you when you die? Yeah. Dogs will. Yeah, dogs will, too. Dogs don't do that. I mean, that's what I heard. Dogs don't dogs do that. Dogs eat their own babies. babies. Dogs eat their own babies, let alone dogs will eat the shit out of you. If you if you did and they hungry, they going to eat you. And so you gotta remember, so cats were considered gods. So to us, we just the little peasants or cat. Like we ain't shit to them. Like they we are their servants at that point. We be feeding mm -hmm. them, taking care of them, petting them, giving them little massages when we want when they want them. Like children. Like yeah. So like, Y'all mean if I'm born tomorrow, right? What? Hmm? Take care of me? Yeah. She's like, she ain't yeah. never date nobody else. I ain't never date nobody else. You said treat them like a pet. <laughs> <laughs> No. Not like a god. I don't. Huh. Um, but I treat gods like gods. Yeah. If you act like a god, I'm gonna treat you like a god. That like part. A king, I'm gonna treat you like a king. That part. Well, it's the same with someone. Yeah. Exactly. See. But not for real. Like it's just I don't know. Like I'm just I get so fascinated about stuff like this. Like because this is where the nerd in me come out. And I, you can ask him. I will be watching fucking National Geographic history mm -hmm. on YouTube. Like, just watching different segments. And he'd be like, bro, what the fuck is you watching? They just talking, like, bro, turn that shit off. I'm like, no, wrong. listen. I'm, I'm like, bro, listen to what they're saying. Like, even with the fucking Vatican, bro, like, the shit that I've been looking at, bro, they know yeah. every fucking thing. Yeah. They, the Vatican is the government. Yeah. They control everything. Catholics yeah. control everything. Your literature, your religion. How the Catholic Church tell everybody how to be Christians? That's what I'm saying. Did you hear about what happened in November about the the Pope called a meeting with all of the leaders of every religion, and they all went to some mountain where I guess Moses heard from God to write the Ten Commandments, so they could rewrite the Ten Commandments. We'll that was November 18th. I mean, that's what Constantine did. Yes. When, and this was like on CNN and shit. They all went and did it. It was a big old thing that happened. And then like even boiling down to like, I was watching the whole History Channel thing with the Vatican and they were talking about how it was these kids that they heard from some angel that came down mm -hmm. and talked to them and told them everything that was going to happen and they went back to the Pope. They told the Pope, the Pope made them write everything in a book. And then the Pope took the book away and said, you cannot talk about this to anyone else. And it was to the point where they told them that one of the Popes, I think it was Pope Francis III, something like that, I don't know, was gonna be assassinated on such and such date at such and such time by this. Like it told them in detail and it happened. Hmm. And I think one of the girls, she ended up coming out saying like they were um, like telling everybody like what was happening, like what she had put in the book. And the Vatican, like they like shunned her out of the church. Like they told her she couldn't come back. No, I thought they killed her. Like, no, nah, I mean shit. I don't know. They probably did. Just, Have you heard that they're like in the Middle East that they feel like they found their Messiah? Like, there's a guy out there, they out here, like, kissing this man's feet, his hands, like, every, they following him. What, they gonna crucify his him. ass, too? No, girl, they <laughs> looking for him. Like, they looking for whatever he got to give them. They, like, he, like, so really he young. Jesus. He know the Torah, yeah, like, or the Antichrist. Cause I was about to say, say, that sounds like, like the Antichrist. Um, it's this big fire that they lit or whatever, and people saying, like, they saw this spirit come out. I watched the video, it's like... I don't. I, know, I believe nothing video. on the camera, but yeah, you could see something come out of the shit, and like the people are like, <laughs> type shit, like what the mm. fuck. So, but they think that they found the new Jesus, basically. Oh, <laughs> like I'm a like even with the whole camera thing, I be telling people like now I don't put nothing past nothing now because 
the only reason why I'm saying that, yes, we have a lot of technology, it's a lot of editing, it's a lot of all of this stuff. But one thing, just like how they used to say, oh, you put it in a book mm -hmm. and people won't read it. Mm -hmm. Now it's the opposite. See, people, we know everybody ain't going to read no books. They don't give a fuck about that. So what else can we do to get their attention without getting their attention? How did that play in sight? Put it on the screen because that's what everybody uses. So it's like you put it on a phone, you put it on social media, you put it on the media like the news and movies and TV shows and you put it in their face and it's just gonna be like, oh, this is just entertainment. Oh, they edited that. Oh, they did that. And it's like, nobody's thinking like, but what if this is real? I think like that, but at the same time, I just wait for, for whatever the, I'm yeah. supposed to know. Yeah, you know? and it'll come to you when it you're does. supposed to know. Like, weirdest shit ever. Me and him, we were asleep. This is 2019. Before this whole COVID shit broke out, we were asleep. And I was in a dream, and it was like, it looked like a war. There was like cars on fire, people running around, people hiding. And I was looking for him. And I'm like calling his name. And he woke up. He told me he had a similar dream, but within his dream, he heard something in the physical go up past his ear saying, Pand Pandemonium. Mm. And I was like, Pandemonium, what the fuck is that? Like, I'm like, what is that? And we're looking for the word, and we didn't find, and I'm like, Pandemonium? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, it said Pandemonium. Pandemonium. And it meant war. And then one meant confusion. And then pandemic. COVID. COVID had it. 2020. And that's and then on top of that you had all and so you had COVID you had all these riots you had all of this stuff going on and it was like is that what the dream was about mm -hmm. like was it a warning or what was it we still I mean we think it might have been a warning but we still don't fully know to this day what it could have been because it wasn't it wasn't specific like it wasn't exactly what I had saw yeah. but like yeah, I had that dream like right after. Um, no, before Darius called me, mm -hmm. when he was in the army. Oh, yeah. He said, we're going to get tissue. I said, why? He was like, just go get some tissue. This was before the pandemic even happened. I was like, why? Even know and he was like, they finna over. shut the whole city down. It was, he told me this in January. He was like, bro, they finna shut the whole city down in March. Go get tissue, go get everything you need. Like, what is he talking about? And <laughs> it was right before I had, right before he said. They know, before we know. I feel like I knew. I feel like um, the pandemic was definitely something you could predict before, way beforehand. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were calling this out. It. Donald Trump was saying this shit. He, he was. He said all of this stuff. And he going to jail? No. Oh, okay. Presidents can't go to prison, right? Yeah. You said president. Uh, ex, ex president. I heard. I don't, think, yeah, I don't think presidents go to uh, prison. I'm pretty you sure they can lock you everything. up. I don't know. They could lock him up, but um, they not. Finding no proof of nothing on this man. You can investigate him all you want. Because that motherfucker's not, smart. He's not doing true. nothing illegal. Yes. He's yeah. not doing nothing. He found the legal way to scam the exactly. system. He, tried, he found the, what I'm trying to find. Exactly. And we Shit. get mad because the nigga know the way instead of asking him how he did it. You That's know, my he to, You know what's crazy? When I was 18, I was a part of his little um business called ACN. I don't know if y'all remember ACN. Mm -hmm. ACN, so the crazy thing is my mom was a part of ACN years ago. And that was when they came out with the first landline video phone. Okay. <laughs> that bitch was big as fuck. That bitch looked like that. Like it was big. And it had a phone and then it had a screen. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how y'all see these like phones in these offices with the little screen that stick up? Mm -hmm. Well, imagine that screen sticking up is a camera. Mm -hmm. And you can video chat anybody with that same landline. And so my mom was selling these phones. She used to have like meetings and all of that stuff with ACN. Skip years later, I forgot about that shit. Skip years later, I become part of ACN. But this time it ain't the landlines no more. This time is this is how smart Donald Trump is. Pretty much, you're not you're selling somebody something that they already have. Mm -hmm. So you have gas and electricity. All right, this is what I'm going to do for you. Give me your gas and electricity account numbers. I'm going to give you a discount every month, but you're going to pay me X amount of dollars. So let me be your third party. 
that's what I, that just happened to me today. I talked to somebody about like a consolidation, right? Mm-hmm. And so they were like, okay, well, you don't qualify for the consolidation loan, but you qualify for our program. But we want you to stop paying these people over here and just pay us. A hundred something dollars every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as me just deciding thing. to say fuck these people and shacking <laughs> up my money. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> literally, <laughs> that's it. And Nate, and let me tell you who our target audience was: our family and friends. They wanted us to contact family and friends first, not go out and recruit. No, it was about contacting the people that's close to you. Why? This, this is how this is how smart that mother, that white orange head motherfucker is. Contact the people that's close with you because they're going to trust you. Yep, they sure are. They're going to trust you. They're going to trust you with their information. They're going to trust you. And so get them (laughs) to give you their account information so that way they can pay us instead of paying them. We'll make sure that it gets paid. They'll pay us instead of them. And then what we're going to do with you is we're going to give you a percentage. Pyramid scheme, we're going to give you a percentage. And then from there, you get more people on your team. We gonna give you a percentage in their percentage, and then they gonna give you a piece of their percentage, and they giving us a piece of their percentage. I said this motherfucker smart. It is smart. They he eventually sold the company, but I was like, damn, it's smart. It's literally smart. Like, and it's all legal. <laughs> yeah, nothing was illegal. And I had a friend. This was in Baltimore. I have a friend named Raheem. He was 24 years old and he was a multi-millionaire off of that shit. And I was a part of his team. Our team was called the Wolf Pack. It was a team full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people from 18 to 30 years old doing this shit. Like, and making the money. I ain't get that far because I ain't staying it long enough. My attention span was very short back then. But it's like that like people will say okay it's a scheme right but one i'm giving you a better rate mm-hmm. i'm helping you learn how to build your own fucking business mm-hmm. and now it's on you how much you want to really make out of this stuff Period. if you apply pressure within yourself so i'm teaching you to be an entrepreneur and to run your own stuff yep versus saying rely on me you know what i'm saying and i'm but doing it just- for free because you won't be paying me on the back end eventually anyway guess what that is a fucking job the music industry, everything that everybody want to be in. Yeah. But we don't call them pyramid schemes. Exactly. And it's a better deal over here than doing it over here. Because it's what, it's what you put into it. If you, it's basically, you got to work for this shit. Yeah. So do you want to work hard for yourself or you want to go work hard for another? And, and the crazy thing, we used to have this shit every Saturday, these little like powwow, like convention things. Mm-hmm. And we all go to these pretty hotels, get breakfast, all of this shit. And then we go into the conference and they'll get up there, like the VPs, the RVPs, all of these people, they'll get up there and they'll say, they said, it's okay. This, this ain't for everybody. This shit, they be raw. This shit ain't for everybody. Okay. We still need people to run our McDonald's. We still need people to run our Chipotle. We still need people to run our Walmarts. We need y'all. So if y'all want to go be those people, go be those people. But the people that don't want to be those people, this is how you don't mm-hmm. be one of the people. Okay. Like, and it's like, I wish I would have kind of stayed with it. But then again, that wasn't for me. It's a hustling type it of thing. It is. Game. Like, it, when I tell you we was hitting the fan every fucking day like i'm still in high school doing this shit like every day they like you need to do a meeting when we doing your meeting you need to invite some friends and i actually did get a girl on my team and she was more of a hustler than i was Mm -hmm. she had her parents on that shit her aunties uncles cousins and so what was i i was accumulating money from her exactly but then she fell off and I already wasn't really doing shit. So, I mean, both of us just eventually, because we were still in high school, so we started having high school shit going on. So it's like, nah, we just won't, you know. So it it's just, it's crazy that people, I get it. Donald Trump, he is sexist. He is racist. He is all of those things. But one thing, racist. yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him on that, because some of the shit he be saying be real shit. A lot and of the shit lot, he be saying he be <laughs> fucking real honest. Shit. So it's like, I don't know, like, it's one of those things where 
people had their own perspective. Now, the sexist thing I do know because when any man that said he would fuck his daughter is nasty. Shit. That's what my cousin brought up. Like, <laughs> that shit nasty as fuck. Like, bro, the fact you thinking like that is weird. But anyway, like, one thing you can't take from that man is that motherfucker is smart. He's smart. He know how to use the system. And he became a billionaire off of the government's dime. And, and he not hiding it. And not hiding it. And then the motherfucker became a part of the government. Hello. He became the face of the government, the Hello. president. And so now he know everything he's a, and he old as shit so he probably gonna die soon but i mean he knows everything and he called out everything yeah that's why they don't like him they like this nigga talk too much mm-hmm. he's fucking up our shit look yeah. at all the people who got arrested when this man was a president bro mm-hmm. that, the whole epstein shit went down when this man was, regardless people be like oh that was his friend we ain't seen no proof this nigga being on there yeah we haven't Mm-hmm. But we seen Obama name on the flight list. Mm-hmm. We, we seen uh, who the Clintons on the flight list. Mm-hmm. All and the Chris that, Rock was on the flight list. The people that people, uh, people who get on Jeffrey Epstein's plane and go to his island where they play with kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shit, weird as fuck. Yeah, weird as fuck. Like weirdest shit ever. And the thing is, it's like. It's one of those things where the government, they try to be, that's why I am grateful to be where I'm from. I know it's a hard city, but when I say it's history, we right around the corner from D.C. We take field trips to D.C. all the time. We right by the government. The Social Security building, the headquarters, was right up the street from my house. Like, I was grateful to be around that type of stuff because it broadened my education Mm -hmm. on its own. Like, me just going to those museums for the hell of it, Mm -hmm. just because we don't got shit to do. And we walking around that shit and reading and and actually engaging in shit because the shit was free. Mm -hmm. And it gave us, like I said, it gave us something to do. Like, it really opened my mind to a lot of different shit. It helped me not think like the collective. Yeah. It's not just one way. Yeah, like, and Lord knows, I never went on a white uh, um, White House tour. Me I, I wanted to. <laughs> I was scared to do that shit. I, I ain't trying to be in that bitch and they just decide they pissed off. Hell yeah, and then they be like, you know what, none of y'all motherfuckers leaving. Okay. And I'll be like, oh, no, nah, I'm talking about somebody trying to hit that motherfucker. But I don't oh, think, yeah. I don't think the White House could get hit by anything. We got bases too many. Even when nine eleven happened, and they had all that, I remember like my their their target places was every place that was the headquarters for the government. So Baltimore houses the Social Security headquarters. Well, that's everybody's fucking information, like everybody in the world's information that has a Social Security number. So they hit that. They wipe everybody out. Mm-hmm. Then you got the Pentagon. They was that de- they was definitely about to go for that. Then you hit the Twin Towers. Then they was definitely mm-hmm. going for the White House. Okay, we started with that eleven Yeah, like I like I don't know. And then it's crazy how that shit blew up twice. First of all, do you know that there were? <laughs> Cause you know people say that was a demolition. Yeah. Do you know there was another building? that people never report on but that motherfucker blew up too oh no i heard about that That, yes the same way that the twin towers Mm fell it was the twin towers what else got hit it was somewhere in new york um the twin towers whatever else got hit Mm -hmm. but they was like how the fuck did a plane hit this shit when it was built Mm -hmm. to be able to withstand a plane Mm -hmm. hitting it if a plane would have hit it it would have hit it and sat there so it's like how did a plane blow this up so boom, that building, the Twin Towers, and then there was this third site that blew up, and nobody don't talk about it. Mm-mm. But it was the same time where that stuff happened. Yeah, yeah. look it up. There's this um. That's because being... them motherfuckers wasn't no planes, bro. Them shits was missiles that was hitting them there. I swear to God, they wasn't was no fucking missiles. missiles. It was bombs in the bottom. Yeah, like I feel like if it was, it would have blew up where it blew up oh, at, that's not true. from the bottom. Yeah, that's it blew true. up from the that bottom. That shit was planted there already. Yeah, they it was bombs, planted. and it's it's known that a lot of uh, they said white Jews. I don't know who the people were. A lot of people did not go to work that day. Yeah, like they, they knew that they knew. wasn't supposed to go to work. They knew. There's footage of the firefighters and stuff inside of one of them buildings, and shit still exploding. 
while they're standing in there. Yeah, those guns are terrible. Yeah, yeah. ain't no way you're not hitting us. It was we done so that way the government could do what they wanted to do, which yeah, was go to Iran uh, okay. and get rid of them motherfuckers. And yeah, take the oil. Yeah. Like Trump bombed them folks with them androids. You know yeah, I understand Android his purpose for that. I said, motherfucker, you just like... trying to stare up shit at this point. Stop. <laughs> um, you trying to say, um, Damn, airstrike. Mm-hmm. The airstrike, well, drone. Drone. Fucking drone. I said android. My bad. When I heard Jones. that shit across the damn uh, yeah, he on TV when he yeah. did that shit, I said, bro, what the fuck is wrong with yeah, this man? He just trying to do shit. shit like, purpose. what the fuck? Like, you trying to get us all <laughs> killed out here. Look it up, you'll find out. Yeah, because they probably was going to try and hit us first. So he was like, fuck, he, he a child, bro. You, I'm going to hit like you Trump, when you hit though. me. Like, he, told, um, he told the truth. He said he hit the Twin Towers, the, uh, the Pentagon. They said a four plane crash to the field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. They t- that's what they talk about. Yeah, but look up the uh, the third building that exploded on 9-11 yeah. or something. Like, no plane hit it. Because the plane, up. I remember the plane shit that happened. Because that's I the plane they I was in Maryland. So we in, my grandmother in D.C. Yeah. And we watching this shit on TV. Like, yo, what the Oh, young as hell. That's, that's why I was in like second I grade. Remember, uh, I can remember. I was in the same grade. Like, we I wasn't watching. even in no second grade. Yeah. I was, that was what? You still a baby. That was 2000. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't really a baby. I was probably like four. You still a baby. Yeah, I was probably like four. But I remember like 2001. Yeah. Yeah, so like, two, yeah, so like so I but I actually years. remember certain things. I remember my mom being frantic because she was downtown Baltimore when the shit was happening. And so they didn't know because Baltimore does have headquarters down there. She didn't know what they were going to do. And they started shut. The National Guard came out. Mm-hmm. They were starting to shut everything down. That's how I knew. They probably, Baltimore, they probably just want to take that whole city out. Oh, um, Tower 7. Okay, what is that? Six of the five star twin towers of 47 story third tower known as uh, Tower 7. Also collapsed after seven hours on the same day. Was it? From, yeah. For no reason. For no reason. But that, I follow um Donald Trump Jr. This man is like the mean king. Like his posts are funny <laughs> as hell. So it was this video and it was like a cartoon. And it was the Twin Towers and this plane about to come hit it. And Superman came. It was like, Superman saves the day again. And he grabbed the plane to stop it. And then the fucking Twin Towers blow up anyway next to him. I'm like, nah, for real. Like, dead ass. They be telling the truth on cartoons. Yeah. Cartoons, movies, all of this shit. They be telling you. I want to go back and watch Atlantis. Because... That the bro, do you know that was my favorite? Okay, I gotta so go I back have, and watch it. I have this weird fetish with water mm. and mermaids, mm. and I used to tell people like I'm a mermaid. Mm. <laughs> and the weirdest shit happened to me a couple months ago. Um, this white girl at the crystal shop, and she was like, "Oh my god, you're a singer and singing! Oh my gosh, that's so cool!" And so I said, "Yeah, listen to this song," and it was a song that me and him we just like dropped not too long ago. And in the beginning, like, I'm singing, but it's, like, this operatic voice. And she said, oh, my gosh. Like, you almost sound like a siren. Mm -hmm. And so when she's like, I'm going to listen to the song. We were coming back the next day anyway because they were having, like, this little festival. So we was coming back. And when we came back, she ran out of the room and she said, oh, my God, you are a siren. Like, that's what you are. You're a siren. And it took me all the way back to, like, last year, I had a dream that I was captured. And it's not like some movie shit, but I had a dream that I was captured by these astronauts or government people. And they put me in this ship and they submerged me into the water. Mm. And I was in the water and I was moving. I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I was looking for him. And then they had him pop up on the screen. He was on the screen, and he was trying to talk to me. He was like, why won't y'all let her out the water? Let her out the water. And they said, just watch. And my face, like, they showed, like, a mirror reflection. My face started to change. Mm. Like, I started to, like, my cheekbones got higher. I started, like, growing, like, these weird-ass gills. Like, my eyes changed to, like, a pasty white color. And I was still speaking English, though. Like, I was still trying to get his attention. And the entire planet was water. Mm-hmm. And I was like, 
I woke up out of it and I told him immediately. It's to, it's to this day I still remember. Yeah, I'm dreaming dream. bad dreams. The only crazy dream I think I ever had, I was sleeping in my living room on the couch. And this when I was with my crazy ex or whatever. But he was like, if, if I'm on the couch right here, my mm-hmm. door is right here. My mm-hmm. bedroom door is right here. So I'm sleeping on the couch and all I hear is like, mm-hmm. strong ass, loud vibrating. Mm-hmm. And so in my dream, I wake up, like, but I'm still asleep. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck? It's loud. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to yell. I can't yell. I'm like, yo, like, trying mm-hmm. to tell me, like, hey, I can't yell over this shit. Mm-hmm. And I see this alien looking ass thing. And I'm like, yo, like, I can't move. Yo, I can't crazy. do nothing. And I just feel the vibration in my body. I'm looking at this shit. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm stuck. Mm-hmm. And then I, I'm i able to jump out of dream. So I was mm-hmm. trying. I'm like, get the fuck. I, I realized, like, hey, you're sleeping. Get up. Mm-hmm. When I got up, I'm like, and I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, did you hear something? He's like, no. Like, I'm describing it to him. He's like, man, they say that happens when people get abducted. I'm like, you know I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. That's crazy because, yo, that shit's so crazy. But that's confirmation. That's crazy. Because, all right, so how long ago did you have that dream? Like 2018, 19. Okay, that's crazy because a couple months ago for me, I had a dream. I was in I was in my house, I was in my room, and I woke up. I walked out the door, and then I was somewhere else. And we was walking around, and everybody was hiding from me. It was a green beam that was coming out of the sky, and it was scanning, scanning. And when it scanned, it looked like. I don't know. It was just a green bean. And it scanned and it kept scanning people and it would be like full blood, half blood, full blood, half blood. And when it scanned me the first time it said half blood, then it would do a whole nother perimeter scan. And then it got to me again and said full blood. And when it said full blood, I popped up and it was these people standing in front of me. They was tall as shit. They was different fucking colors. And I was just looking up at them and they were talking. Go backwards. Before that dream, like when we first moved into the apartment we're in now, I had a dream I walked out of the room into our living room and it was these tall ass people all standing in a circle over something. Mm. And I'm trying they're all talking. Like I just hear a lot of fucking talking and I don't know what they're saying, they're just talking a lot. And the light, my lamp in the corner was on. So it was bright. And so I'm walking, I'm trying to get through, and when I look over, it's me. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking, I'm like, well, what they say? I'm like, hey, hey, y'all, what y'all saying about me? Like, I'm looking up at them. Nobody's acknowledging me. And then I just walked back in the room. I went, I laid back down, and then I woke up in real life. Somebody had a dream like that that I watched on TikTok. He was like, um, he kind of woke up, and, like, if you know what angels look like, they're not supposed to look like what we think they look right. like. They yeah. look scary as shit. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he said he they woke described up, it and it was, like, thousands of angels sitting in his room but one of them realized that he could see them and it like zoomed up to his face oh, type shit. No. and like he was like like he jumped out of it and he was like i regret it i feel the same way i, I would have regretted that shit too because that's he could have asked some shit yeah like but he was like yeah I, I regret that i jumped out of it but i feel that because that should be scary like the fuck for real though you be like mm, but it mm-hmm. jumped to him and looked at him like you could see us the most of the time they be knowing they know that you can see them it's just a matter of they them knowing that you're aware Mm -hmm. it's like uh you aware all right well let me talk to you Mm -hmm. but we get so nervous that we like "Uh uh-uh gotta go like it's it's one of those things like even girl i can go on for dreams for days like for real like our dreams get crazy because we i don't know what happened but like, we just tend to, we've been dreaming, like, our dreams be in sync sometimes, but now that we've been together so long, now we be dreaming on our own. And it's been to a point where, like, like he said, like, I'll stop breathing or I'll be gasping. How I know that I'm coming from a travel is when I wake up and I'm like, <gasps> because that's my soul mm-hmm. coming back. That's like a, all right, I'm up. And so it's like a... Man, when I right now in the space that we're in now, 
we everybody is starting to encounter the real and that's because i don't know what's about to happen i don't know what's coming i don't know but whatever it is or whoever they are like they want our attention they like hey we trying to hey we trying to help y'all hey wake up wake up get up like i don't know this shit crazy though. it is nutty though like and it make you feel like you delusional low-key i just be trying to gauge it like especially my background is in psychology so i'm like all right you could want to see this shit and mm-hmm. think that you seeing shit. So if I think I'm seeing shit, I just ignore, like, not ignore it. I'll mm-hmm. acknowledge to myself, all right, I saw this. And I'll see how frequent it is. Like, mm-hmm. So see if that was just all in the mind. Yeah. See if that, that's how, that's what, like, how I am. Like, even we was driving from Florida and I wasn't trying to go to sleep because we was uncomfortable where we were. And. It was like three, four o'clock in the morning. I had not been to sleep at all. Neither had he. And he's driving. And so I'm up and he's gunning. And I said, Wait, 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 stop this people walking. Oh my God. <laughs> he said, What the fuck are you talking about? I said, No, it's two people in the cell. You don't see him? You don't see him? You would have thought I was high or some mm-hmm. shit. Or on a shroom or something. But no, I literally was just in in the in between mm-hmm. of being awake and asleep. And, bro, they were, it was two people, and we were driving through, you know how the drive to Florida is country as hell. You see all the plantation slave people, all that stuff. And it was two people in white, and they were standing on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And I was like, when I came out, like, when I finally, like, was back to my normal consciousness, I was like, what if those were, like, slaves or something? And he was like, I don't know, they might, he be encouraging my shit sometimes. He's like, I don't know, it might have been, I don't know. (laughs) And I'm like, but for real, like, and because I am a seer, I'm bound to see spirits. That's why I've been led to go to New Orleans and I have never been to New Orleans. You should go to Covington. Covington. Georgia. I don't know nothing about, but you know about Covington, Georgia? It's where the cell is. That's where they shoot, like, the Walking Dead and all that stuff, too. It's Kearns. Oh. It's past Kearns. Yeah, it's like right next to Kearns. They say um, people still have slaves in them. They do. We saw them on the way to Florida last, yeah, yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, so it was a school bus. Bro, that shit was crazy as fuck. It was a school bus. Some and of it was slaves. Trustees. Nah, bro. Them motherfuckers were slaves because it was only black people. They were picking cotton. <laughs> and it was a man on a horse in the back. And we didn't even see it until his brother in the back. He was like, bro, them fucking slaves. I was like, what are you talking about? And we looked. It was nothing but black people in the hottest sun picking cotton. Picking cotton. And it's a man on a horse. You know, um, and they had on regular, they had on regular ass clothes. Like, they didn't have on no jumpsuits or nothing. Like, they had on working clothes. And I'm like, slaves? The Russia fuck? got slaves. I don't know prison, you know, you work for, like, a low wage. I don't know if they still make, uh, like, people in prison pick cotton. I know they be having like jobs though, like real jobs. I don't know what that was, but whatever it was, it did not sit right with me. Cause I, when I saw it, it, it made my skin crawl. I was like, I ain't help them. I mean, shit, I ain't been. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> my guns ain't big enough. <laughs> I'm like, hey, bro, y'all good? <laughs> the fuck is no, going on? No, the thing on? is, is that it was off the highway, so we're driving on the highway. We see that, you know how when you drive on hey, the highway, over my name. this is crazy. You're throwing me off. Like yeah, yeah, it was like one of oh, those like things. They in. Yeah, and I was just looking. I was like, bro, what the well, fuck? They gotta is shoot far to talk to me. Hey, yo, y'all good? <laughs> this looks crazy. <laughs> that would have been me on the outskirts. I know y'all hear me. No, nah, it's really, it's really, really, that, that shit was weird as shit. I was like, that shit was weird as fuck. Mm-hmm. But I believe, you know, it's a lot of families who, they had families who were born as slaves and they kind of, like a lot of them were like given deeds to the houses and stuff like that. Or if not the black people, like, you know, the, the white people that the generations that go on and on. They also have families of black people that Mm -hmm. are like that too, where it's generations where they have signed that they will forever serve that family. And so they're forever a slave. Every every generation will forever be a slave. Nah, fuck that. I'm leaving. Listen, I ain't nobody slave. They go ahead to kill me. I always say it, they go ahead to kill me because I'm running. I ain't run out. I'll kill your ass. You better stop playing with me. Y'all live here? 
Yes like, and no, you know, it's, it's not that bad. Like some people, when they in prison thirty years, they don't want to get out, or they're committed. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's yeah. institutionalized. Yeah. Like they're stuck. Yeah. Like how we are. Yeah, we're stuck. We're stuck that thinking that the only way to survive is to wake this up shit. and go to work every day and like, pay it's... bills. And if we don't pay our bills, we lose our house, car, all of that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. try it though. Yeah. Like my my mom is like she like. Nigga, if I don't go to work, then you don't get to get the shit you got. And I'm like, and I will be okay with that. Yeah, fuck that, that shit. That shit is not going <laughs> to kill me. I will go fuck and find a shit. happy life. I will go fucking travel the world and figure out. I keep joking with him. him. I said, I want a whole series. He'd be like, is that the shots about that? I'm like, no, I do. I want lions and tigers. Mm -hmm. And I want I want bears. I want a fucking bug cat. I want a finger monkey. Like, okay. I want all of this shit. And I want to start growing my own goddamn vegetables because these motherfuckers are putting their hurry up because they making GMO seeds. I know. So. I know. And then even the water. That's yeah. another thing. Y'all see, I'm back drinking spring water. This is why. They're checking for fluoride. This is the healthiest water you can fucking drink at this point. I don't understand how it's ingredients in water. That Hello. shit pissed me off when I was... I was because when we went on our diet, we couldn't drink nothing but water, and I started knowing that the enamel in my tooth started wearing down to where my gum was not over my tooth anymore. I'm starting. I started to see the root, and I said, "Why the fuck is this happening? Is it the toothpaste? Is it the what is it?" And I started looking in the water and looking up what these things are and what they do, and I'm like, "Wait a second. Why are y'all putting fucking potassium chloride in water to make it thick? Why would we need to make water thick again? Why do we got to do anything with water? Like, ain't that... The only thing we probably... The most we need to do is go to a well, get this spring water right here, and filter that bitch a couple times through some fishnets or some shit, mm -hmm. and drink it. Like... I don't understand where. Y'all know Georgia, I mean, Atlanta water right now, fuck that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's Georgia overall, but because all no, the it's, 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 it's Forsyth County, Clayton County, um, DeKalb County, mm -hmm. um, Fulton County. Damn, they're all of Atlanta. <laughs> because everybody pipe busting. Mm -hmm. So it's like lead and metal and all that shit. The, the fucked up shit about that is it's been in there. Yeah. We got, we got, fit, we had bought some freshwater fish and they told us, oh yeah, get the, get the, um, What's it called? What's that shit called they made us get for the mm -hmm. fish? Conditioner. Mm -hmm. Use your tap water, pour the conditioner in there, let it sit, and then add the fish. They'll be fine. Man, this fish started dying like fuck. I said, bro, this fish is dying. Like, why is it dying? And so we had the pH strips. And so I don't know. One day I was like, I want to test our water. Let's see if it pick up our water. Man, I stick that pH strip under our water. Our water came back straight a sick. And I said, that's why while I'm taking a shower, I'm itching. Who the fuck itches while they washing the eggs? Mm -hmm. I was itching like my skin. I'm like, why am I itching? It's because our water's acidic. Yeah, all that shit dirty. Like, everything sucks. It does. <laughs> like, it's like, we in the same thing. like places that they tell us is fucked up. We're in the same version. My, my mom always points out the electricity. If you sit and you look at the lights, every once in a while, that shit dims. Oh, yeah, no, that shit happened to me at work a couple weeks ago. It's always going to happen yeah. because they're dimming it to conserve some shit, and but the they're not giving us a discount. I ask, they're I, taking our power. I asked my work, the people I work with, I said, did it just get dark ahead of y'all? They're like, no. I'm like, Sorry, I'm not trying to make me feel like I'm crazy, but Even, I'm like, I saw it go like. Look at the holiday season, right? All out of nowhere, all the pipes busting in here, right? When I was back home in Maryland, all the fucking electricity went out. Yeah. And I mean, at first, it was like a distraction type electricity outage. Like, the whole house is lit up. But she put food in the uh, air fryer. You could press the buttons, but it won't cook. Mm. You could go over here. The heat is on, but it's nothing blowing out. Like, it's really super low. That's but the then thing. you call Pepco. They came over here. They shut everything. I mean, everything was off. They cut it back on. Now everything working. They um they do that in Africa like a certain amount of time to conserve energy. And that's what people be saying about other places, but it happens to us, and we think oh because we get to wear these clothes and go in these places that we something higher. We're going through the same exact shit. Yeah. They do it. They do it over there to experiment with those people, and then they bring it here. That shit is ridiculous. But we like oh well, 
Africa's poor and all. Africa ain't no fucking poor. They got, bro. I was me and my his, history channel shit. But I'm so fucking lit. When when yeah, busy man. <laughs> when I when I was watching it and they were showing like all the like um different places in Africa and different parts of Africa. It's this desert where <laughs> shit crazy. It's this desert where it turned into a forest. Mm-hmm. And this forest that they that they're saying that they discovered is what they believe to be the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And people they take tourists around the area. They only take them they take them into the forest, but they only take them to certain parts because can't nobody go further. If you go further, you're gonna run into a tribe that's been protecting this forest forever. And the tribe's gonna kill you. Like straight up. They ain't letting nobody in only for who you are. And I was watching, I said, damn. And then it's another part of Africa where these stones, like this one I have on now, this is a um damn, I just forgot to name my own damn stones that quick. I'm talking too much. But <laughs> But this is a desert rose, a desert rose. And so these are actually very hard to find to the point where I wear it around and people be like, oh my gosh, they know exactly what it is, but they're like, I've never been able to get one. They're hard to find. Y'all go to certain places to get them, but this shit right here cost me $15. So most people, that's not a lot. That's a lot for a fucking rock. No. Okay. Like that's a lot for a rock. Other places, the bigger they get, the higher they cost. Mm -hmm. So... You want one that's the size of this whole entire microphone that's just gonna cost you a good maybe two, three hundred dollars. You want one that's as tall as that um poster right there that's gonna be over fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars or more. And this is shit they get out of the ground. This is what they find in the ground. They go to places like Africa and like it's this place in Africa where these moonstones grow. And people pick them. They're these crystal blue stones. And they only show there. And they, I think they said a scientist did test them. They broke it down to where there's pieces of gold inside of the stone. Hmm. I was like, God damn. Like, now, Africa ever. is extremely rich in resources. That's why everybody's over there mm-hmm. and telling you not to go. It's extremly rich in resources. Oh, they're sick over there. They got AIDS and HIV. And yeah, they do because y'all <laughs> releasing mosquitoes over there that's fucking giving them the shit. Mm-hmm. The same way they did in Florida. They they releasing mad stuff and then be like, oh, none of this stuff ain't normal. It's not natural. This shit it's is all man genetic made. made. Genetically made. Like, that shit is weird as shit. That shit is lame. They put it in our it's food. It's like, ain't nowhere you could go. There's it's not, go. unless you take your ass over to fucking Indonesia or Fiji or Bali or some shit where they got rules. Like, Indonesia just passed a law that if you're caught having sex outside of marriage, that you do life in prison. Mm-hmm. If you're caught smoking weed in Indonesia, you get the death penalty. But what, but can, what can you put in my food? What can you put in my water? That's what's important to me. Mm-hmm. What is allowed? Like FDA, CDC, yeah, they all these fucking ABC. All, did you hear about all the places that, like, the shit that we eat, like Twinkies and all of that type of shit, how it's illegal I've been in all that. places? Yeah. Like, that shit's crazy as fuck. Because it's like the Subway uh, brand. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's illegal once, as fuck. Once they, that shit was going around on the internet, I went to Subway. I was like, let me get a salad bowl. They said, oh, we don't sell salads. Basically, you got to get the sandwich. You got to get the bread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I left out of there. Yeah. I going. I McDonald's buns. Too. Anything with the color red. Um, now, it's crazy. I've always been allergic to red dot 40. Mm-hmm. And I can't have, like, since I was a little girl, I cannot have red dot 40. If I have it, I'm going, my throat going to close up. Some of that shit is made and it's from, like, everything. bug blood, like, roach blood. So it's like, where the fuck you even get the stuff to make this? Like the science lit. <laughs> but yeah, some of the stuff that they put in the food made by a lot of stuff be stuffed in like beaver nuts. Mm-hmm. Like in they size. This stuff is worth it. It's just my lip gloss. Yeah. Well firm. Mm-hmm. And perfume. Yep. Guess what? I don't give a shit. That will oh, that will my, my lips be chapped. My lips nice and smooth and, and glossy. 
for real. I'll put that shit on my lips any day. I don't okay, give a that fuck. That perfume smells bomb as shit. Right. I don't care. That's on me, nigga. Good vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> I will take all the well nuts fiber and put that on my lips. Like, okay. Yeah. 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 But no, nah, like even, but they even say like now, like they had something, they had some type of documentary or some shit come out about like the reproductive system and men and women and how men's sperm is like really really healthy for our skin and for our insides. I've heard it before. I heard, and, I heard it too from a nigga. Yeah, but not like it's been like now they're talking about like scientifically it's been proven like that there the sperm it's the nutrients that's inside of the sperm because you gotta think when you when you have sperm when sperm comes out it's supposed to ejaculate into a woman and create the baby. Mm-hmm. So when you have sperm that comes out, yes, the specimen dies, but it's still nutrients within the specimen. It might not be able to create a baby anymore, but it can still benefit somehow. I mean, I understand that shit. Y'all but, can keep that shit though. But yeah, no, no, no. They can definitely me. keep it because I'm not about to just say, "Hey, go jack off in this cup for me real quick, so I can rub it on my face." Uh, like Glorilla, that's a bitch that she eating on her fries. What? Yeah, she was like, she. I feel like that's not. Like, I don't feel like that's the truth. I feel like no bitch gonna say that on purpose, bro. No, like, you're not. She was hesitating. Like she might do this shit though. Oh, she was hesitating on saying. Yeah, she kept like, okay, okay never mind. She did, she, she was laughing like she, I think she do this shit. Yeah, I think she do too. To say that shit out loud, you can't, no, no. Bro. Can't make this shit up? No, bro. <laughs> Fuck that no. shit weird, I but I'm not gonna do that. That's disgusting. It's one thing, you do whatever you do in the bedroom, but bitch, just on a normal day-to-day basis, you nasty as fuck. Because Would you eat your uh, placenta? I am. You are? I'm going, to, I want, like, I'm, I'm big. We actually was just talking about this shit yesterday. That's crazy. But I want to have a I want to have a natural birth. I want to get a doula. I want to have it at home. I want it in in water. I want to be able to just squat and push my baby out. Um, Again, after birth. Yeah, birth. like I don't give a fuck because shit is inside of me. I'm like shit. I don't care. But I don't. I'm not gonna eat my placenta like just be eating it. But I am gonna get it like probably like put into capsules and just kind of like take it. Oh, like dust. Yeah. That way. It'll make me more comfortable. It'll help it go down easier because I'm a texture eater. Yeah. And I know I ain't going to like that texture. <laughs> Don't tell me what it is. Hey, tell me later. Mm-hmm. Tell me later. Cook it for me. Tell right. me later. Yeah. But you know that they raw, right? Huh? Yeah, Some you women. Raw. I don't know. Yeah, you can. So when you eat stuff, like when you cook stuff, like the nutrients. They take the nutrients. The nutrients. Out. Yeah, so that's why most people, they put it into a pill or they eat it. On a salad or some shit, like oh, meat or something. Mm. And you oh. have a certain amount of time. And at first, I thought about doing like the whole birthing thing, where like you don't cut the umbilical cord. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I was talking to him about this yesterday for real, but like I don't know if it's something I would definitely do. But I've been considering it because, I mean, think about it. The baby comes out and you just cut their nutrients off, and now they have to take all this other shit in there. Yeah, and like now it. they have to try to get used to breast milk instead of letting it naturally come off. And then when it's almost like a, a puppy. Like when you have a puppy, they on the breast milk and then you have to wean them off the breast milk, give it to them a little bit, but add it in with some dog food. And then every time you change your dog's food, you have to add the old food in with the new. It's just like, it's just like, so I feel like, Maybe I should just have the baby let the placenta come off on its own, but then it it is a cause of sometimes it could cause an infection. Like if you don't keep it clean, you gotta keep it clean, and you gotta have it in a bag. And so it's it's a lot. It's a lot that I have researched when it comes to having a baby because I do want a baby eventually, just not right now. But like, it's a lot I researched about that shit. And so it's like, I do, I know for a fact, I don't want nobody taking me to no hospital. I told him, I said, if I go into labor and I open my eyes and I'm in a hospital room, I'm cussing you out and I'm get, I'm taking my IVs and shit out and walking out there. Yeah, I'm just limping. I do not want to be in nobody's, I don't I trust don't them motherfuckers, that. okay? It's our uh, African-American woman's like birthing rate when it comes to death is extremely high now. And that's not by coincidence. It's not now. It's been. Yeah, it's been high. 
it's like becoming more and more like it's getting worse as time progresses and it's like I just I'm good. I have my baby by myself. He'll deliver my baby. That's what okay. I do with that for. Or I'll deliver it myself. I push that bitch out and pick him up and hey, how you doing? <laughs> that should be harder than what it seemed like though. Hmm. That should be harder than what it seemed like though. Yeah, like and I heard a lot of stuff like my friend my friend Linda, she's from Philly, and she um she had both of her kids. She actually got her doula license, but she had both of her kids with a doula, natural birth, because her husband, he's a Muslim, but he doesn't believe in, like, doctors and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So she had both of her kids naturally, water birth, and she's smaller than me. She's shorter than me. She's about 4'11", probably, like, 110 pounds, the most. Very small. Mm-hmm. And she pushed both of them babies out naturally. No medicine, no nothing. Just breathing and support. That's it. I'm like, if your little bitty ass can do it, my big ass can do it. Really? <laughs> like, like, I don't care. I think the whole, pur- the whole purpose of birth is to go through the experience. So why take away the pain? Like, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. I'm cracking that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you ain't scamming no more? No, I have not. I'm going to be an engineer now. Okay. You ever want to come up on a scam, give it to me. <laughs> Somebody was trying to invite me to one today. I was like, no, nah, I've been going through too much shit. I ain't even about to play with you. Oh, nah. God, no. My homeboy said the same. It's funny. He said the same thing. He's like, you don't want to do it. I'll do it. Shit, I'll do it for you. Like, nah. Man, because that should be. You talking about I wouldn't never when get caught? When they get locked up, they going to say your name. Yeah, he yeah. told me how to do it. He taught me how to do it. That's what happened. My ex told oh, me. Don't even tell me your name. Shit. Don't yeah. tell me your name. <laughs> nah. Dude, what's your name? Just one guy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise nobody to go through that. It was good meeting y'all, though. This is fun. Not for real. Yeah, I've been talking all uh, night. <laughs> K, K be uh, not showing up, so maybe you can co-host sometime. Yeah. That kicked me out in front of my face. Right, I was about to say, why was yeah. you, why are you just going to do her like that? Oh, she, she knows she don't, she don't let me know or nothing. She just be like, it's I'm been like, one time. No, it's like three. I got another <laughs> show, too. I got like a couple shows. All right, but, uh. Yeah, fuck with me. Let's book some more stuff. And let's talk about these features. Yeah, for real. Let's do it. All right. All right. Later, y'all. Get home safe. No problem. Y'all too. What was it? Two hours? Damn, that was two hours plus the, uh... The hour?